My God, I hate drugs. Budget Secretary Ben Jokno says President Rodrigo Duterte has approved the additional fuel excise tax next year as recommended by economic managers. In a text message, Jokno says the premise for suspending the additional tax, namely high fuel prices, does not exist. He adds the tax impact will be negligible because of substantially lower pump prices. The budget chief explains at its peak, diesel price was at 49 pesos and 80 centavos per liter. It will be 37 pesos and 76 centavos was in January 2019, inclusive of the two peso excise tax. For gasoline, which reached almost 61 pesos per liter, Jokno says they expect it to cost almost 10 pesos less, inclusive of the two peso additional excise tax. Jokno says revenue losses may reach 43.4 billion pesos without the tax, a big amount that is needed to fund the Build, Build, Build infrastructure program. He says President Duterte is only implementing the train law and even if there's a second tranche of the excise tax, fuel prices will be 10 pesos lower than their peak sometime in October. Presidential spokesperson Sal Panelo says while the oil excise tax increase is neg a negligible contributor to inflation, the government still commits to providing financial assistance to the 50% poorest households. An economist believes the increase in fuel excise taxes next year may still impact inflation. Speaking to CNN Philippines, Ateneo Center for Economic Research Director Alvin Ang mentions other factors that caused inflation this year. The fear that it could uh, increase inflation again, uh, I think hist historically the, what they have said is correct. The only thing that is not uh, imputed in their uh, analysis is the possibility of expectations, which played a big role in the train implementation this year. Most of the inflation increases were actually traced to food supply uh, limitations. So. We are addressing that now. So to make sure that this will not create another round of inflation challenges, it must be made sure that supply of basic commodities, particularly rice, would be available. To counter another possible hike in inflation, Professor Ang suggests continuing the early rice importation, passing the rice tarification bill into law, addressing the supply challenges, and monitoring the global oil price market. Minimum jeepney fare is back to 9 pesos, but some drivers and passengers are not aware of this. Commuters and jeepney groups both slam transport regulators for not consulting them and for seemingly snubbing a call to move the minimum fare back to 8 pesos. Carolyn Bonkin has the details. Vicky and Melba still pay 10 pesos for their jeepney ride on Tuesday morning. They're not aware, starting today, jeepney minimum fare is temporarily back to 9 pesos. This is after the LTFRB published a resolution for a provisional 1 peso jeepney fare rollback following recent cuts to diesel prices. 10 pesos kasi yung pinaka ano, minimum fare. Eh. Sumakay na kami ng jeep kanina, 10 pa rin eh. Mas maganda pa, mas mababa pa dyan. Just like the passengers, most jeepney drivers like Lito Tuliao are still not aware of the rollback. Wala pa naman official na ano sa kanya na eh na ibababa na. Kakakuha lang namin ng fair matrix. Ibababa na naman. Nagbayad kami ng ano sa ano na, taripa na yan. And there are those like Joselito who has been charging 9 peso minimum fare even before the rollback because he still doesn't have the 10 peso fare matrix. Eh, wala pa kasi ako taripa eh. Kaya 9 pa rin. Ganon din magbababa rin naman eh. Transport and commuter groups both say there would have been no confusion had LTFRB consulted them. They went to the LTFRB office on Tuesday morning for the scheduled hearing on the pending petition to move the minimum jeepney fare back to 8 pesos, only to find out it has been cancelled. The hearing has been moved to January next year. Biglaan, hindi po dumaan dun sa tinatawag nating demokratikong proseso. Dapat doon, binigyan muna kami ng resolution. Gusto sana namin formal para yung mga ating mga chofer at pasahero hindi mag-aaway sa labas. Noong nag-increase kami, nag-antay pa kami ng mahigit sampung araw bago kami nakasingil. LTFRB member Aileen Lizada was also not aware the hearing was cancelled and the provisional fare rollback would take effect today. Lizada said she was waiting for the board to address her comments on the resolution draft yesterday. We may issue the corresponding relief. Pwede. 
Pero in this case kasi, merong petition. So when there is a petition, what's the, what is the next thing to do? Dapat ang ginawa kasi namin noon, prioritize yung petition. But LTFRB chairman says there's no need for public hearing. Uh, nevertheless, uh, yung yung uh, board resolution naman din po ay kinikilala natin yung mga nangyayari in the last uh, several weeks ano yung uh, tinatawag natin yung pulso ng bayan kung saan yung mga pasero humihingi na rin ng uh, ng uh, pagbaba ng pamasahe dahil nga mm -hmm. baba yung oil price LTFRB also sees no reason to refund the jeepney drivers and operators payments for the fare matrix when the 10 peso minimum fare was implemented last month Caroline Bonkin, CNN Philippines. A check on our global headlines. Important developments in France after a weekend of serious unrest on the streets of Paris. The French government has suspended a planned hike in fuel tax for six months, following weeks of protest and even some rioting. French Prime Minister Edouard Philippe made the announcement on Tuesday. The original hike triggered demonstrations by the so-called Yellow Vest movement, but protests spiraled into an attack on the government of French President Emmanuel Macron and his perceived indifference to inequality and the concerns of poor voters. The French Prime Minister says the government is taking measures to respond to those concerns. U.S. President Donald Trump thinks another summit with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un is needed. That's according to National Security Advisor John Bolton. Bolton explains Kim has not lived up to commitments he made during the first summit in Singapore this past June. The key part of the agreement was that North Korea would work towards complete denuclearization. Bolton says the second summit will likely take place in January or February. He adds that the hefty economic sanctions against North Korea will remain in place for now. And Japan is losing its final pager service after decades. The technology was made obsolete by cell phones. Tokyo Telemessage, the only telecommunications company still operating the service, said it will terminate its pager service in September of 2019. The choice was due to lack of demand, according to the company. For those too young to have ever used one, pagers are a personal radio device that is used to receive messages sent via a switchboard. When the pager beeps or buzzes, the owner usually needs to find a phone to return the message. Pagers were popular in the 1990s before cell phones became widely available to the public. Tokyo Telemetrics says its subscriber base peaked at 1.2 million in 1996. In sports, the big story, Ateneo taking on UP in Game 2 of the UAAP Men's Basketball Finals. The second match of the best of three Battle of Katipunan series is on tap at 3.30 p.m. at the Smart Aganeta Coliseum in Quezon City. The Blue Eagles, now one win away from their second straight championship, look to complete a sweep of the finals this afternoon. But the Fighting Maroons hope to bounce back and force a do-or-die Game 3 of the UAAP title. UP had a send-off mass for the Fighting Maroons at the Parish of the Holy Sacrifice inside UP Diliman yesterday. All team members gathered for a moment of prayer and silence as they asked for strength and guidance ahead of their crucial game. We're really blessed to be here. You know? um, we count our blessings, and uh, but we pause for a moment because we, when, we, when we count it, we also know that we need to move forward after this. And... Um, the boys understand how it is to win. We just have to do it. Uh, they were able to uh, get into game one and understand that uh, when we do things right, I think we will have a chance against the Ateneo. Excited, pero yun nga, pa, hindi pa tapos yung season, may chance pa kami. Igagrab namin yung chance na yan para makuha yung championship. Who do you think will win game two of the UAP men's basketball finals? You Another game. Another game. Game three. Okay, okay let's stretch it out. I would love <laughs>
Love the drama of a game. Of course. I mean, right. it's always nice to just stretch it out just a little bit. Okay. Basta walang mas stress. Basta walang mas stress. I mean, either <laughs> way, <laughs> either way, whoever wins yeah. or, or loses today, I both. mean, it was such a good one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah the For fans sure. are good. And it got a lot of people talking. I yeah. mean, everybody yeah. was like choosing sides and talking about who's going to win it. I can't believe this happened yeah. over time. I mean, it was such an exciting, UAB exciting journey. Finals. Yep. Again, stick around until 7.30 for these stories and more. Meantime, here are the morning headlines. It's a go. President Duterte gives the green light for higher fuel excise tax next year. UP fight or one big fight? All eyes on Araneta today as the UP Fighting Maroons battle the Ateneo Blue Eagles in Game 2 of the UAAP Finals. And the Queen of Soul is coming over today to tell us about her latest Christmas project.